Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Today on the show, we have Jamie Graubert. She's a fractional CMO, and she's been in this world for 20, 25 years of working in CMO industry. So thank you, Jamie, for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we were just talking about some major changes in your life you had to make in fall 2021. Can you share that story? Yeah, so I had COVID. I was one of the first people, I guess, in the organization that I was working for at the time. And, and they were super supportive and success or helpful and everything with that. But I took a long, hard look at life. And when you're one of those people that's on the bubble of, oh my gosh, is, is this the last day I'm going to have? If, am I going to get better? You start really kind of evaluating life. And that's really what it came down to for me is I started to kind of put things into perspective. And as I you know, came out of the whole COVID fog and the, the illness itself, and, and I was deeply, deeply sick. I started to realize that I really wasn't living life authentically. I wasn't doing the things that brought me joy. I was one of those people that was going to work and collecting a paycheck, but yet all of my time was being spent there. And so I started to evaluate the definition of success in my life. And it wasn't to become a martyr and work 70 hours a week and, and those things uh, for the agency. It was, okay, I want to live a fulfilled life. I want to understand my purpose. I want to understand how can I truly leave the world a better place than I found it? And, and what can I do to contribute? And so I started evaluating those things. And, and one of those things was to move somewhere where I felt a little more comfortable, felt more of the vibe that I, I wanted to live. And so I actually, when I, right after I returned to the office, I had a really long, hard talk with our founder and CEO and told him that I wanted to transfer to our California office. And he thought it was a great idea. Also with some things, transitional things that were going on there that it I would be a good addition to the team. And I started just really reaching out. Once I landed here, I hit the ground running and, and I'll tell you this, Chad, if you haven't had to find a place to live and adapt to a new life in the middle of a pandemic, when everything is locked down, that's a real trip in and of itself. But as part of that journey, I drove across the country. So I stopped a lot at a lot of places and really kind of learned more about myself, about what I wanted and had a lot of thinking time. And I started moving towards those, those new definitions of success that I set for myself and landed in California, made a lot of great friends, great connections. And they were like, Hey, you're kind of stuck in the back in the chorus line, so to speak, you need to step out and really start doing something on your own. And so far, wow, the response has just been incredible. So how long ago did you step out on your own now? I started making moves to do that in February of 2021. And then really kind of stepped even further into that, slowly progressing towards that. And then April 1st of last year, I decided to take the plunge completely and just basically pull the rug out from under myself. Are you glad you did it? 1000%. I don't regret it at all. I've met some amazing people, had some great opportunities, and everything seems to be just growing every day. And I, I'm so grateful for that. So how many clients are you kind of consulting for at the same time? Uh, I My client list is really vast because, it, and so that's really kind of an interesting question is I work with some businesses that have, or some companies that are conglomerates. And so they have a number of businesses. And so they've kind of slowly continued it to give me more and more of those. I work for agencies. So I work for, they may hire me to do a project such as evaluate uh, their advertising and media efforts. And are they in the right channels? Are they serving the right people? So I, I do a lot of different work, but I've done in the last 12 months, I've worked for over 15 different companies in some sort of fractional capacity, including most recently as a fractional CMO for a fintech that will launch later this quarter. Very cool. So when you come into something like this fintech, how exactly does that role look? It varies. You know, I have a company that I work with that does, that builds EV chargers and they've been ex in existence for 30 years, but they've been kind of quiet, low key and worked kind of OEM or worked directly with automotive manufacturers. 
So they, you know, they've not really had to advertise until recently. And so it's like, it's from some standpoints, it operates like a startup in the, in the marketing world. So it's building a marketing foundation from the ground up. And then you have an actual, and, but they, the business processes are there. So there's a lot of nuances to that. Then you have a, a real true startup. And most of that is just through networking. And so you just kind of slowly build that network, try to build community. And of course, start throwing in all of the social channels and the, the, the reddits and the discords and all of those kind of thing. Yeah. So, it's interesting. Yeah. A company that's around for 30 years and now they have to come out into the world and you can bring yeah, them in. It's, those are kind of things that are interesting. You have the, the conglomerates that have had these long-standing kind of marketing plans that are just stale and they're like we need somebody that knows what they're doing that has experience in both business to business and consumer how do you how do you navigate those waters and so i i can kind of do that but having 20 years of media experience running media and advertising for news and magazines and things like that really kind of gives me a, a different niche because I, I understand the agency side, I understand the advertising agency part of it or the, the demand and the supply side. But then I've also done a lot of studying and learning. I worked, I did the executives program at MIT to have a better understanding of marketing and analytics. So now I can kind of put it all together and build these strategies that are like, hey, these are gonna work because the numbers, the historical data, when everything says that they should work and so far applying all of that knowledge. And, and that's honestly why, how I keep growing is because the results, they kind of speak for themselves. They're like, oh, hey, you know, we ask you to get us 250 leads. You got us 600 in six months. Like here, take this business unit. What can you do with that? And that's really how it's been working for me. So, and I also, I can't say that I do it all on my own. I have an amazing support system. My partner's phenomenal. I have friends that I work with and I, I've kind of been working with other people who I've worked with in the past who've gone on to other roles, but yet they're like, Hey, I love what you're doing. Can we work together when some, at some point we'll kind of do our thing. So the actually, even in the middle of starting a, not really a nonprofit, but kind of just an org that helps marketing women in marketing better network. And it's not something, it's not a chief. It's not something like that. It's more global, but it's specific to marketing and content and those types of things, because there's a lot of, of introverted people out there that do phenomenal work. And I tend to be a little more, I'm, I'm kind of what they call, I guess, a, an extroverted introvert. So, and I keep getting all of these introverts and they're, they're phenomenal at what they do, but no one knows they exist. So I'm trying to help them help people like that, that really want to, to get things going and, and really kind of start out on their own. How do they get started? So working in, in kind of a mentoring capacity like that. Well, that actually brings me to my next question. What would be your advice to new entrepreneurs or people just starting out? Just do it. Honestly, just do it. That's everybody's afraid of rejection and everybody deals with imposter syndrome in their own way, but just do it. Don't, don't wait because one, no one's guaranteed tomorrow. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's that. But it's also, if you just do the thing, you're being true to yourself. You're, you're following your heart, you're following your passion, and you're gonna pour everything you've got into it. The key part of that is though, you're gonna fail, you're gonna stumble, but that's not how you can look at it. Look at it as a learning experience. I, I can't remember who to attribute this quote to, but I know it's, it's that it's the quote about, I didn't fail. I found a thousand ways not to do it, so to speak. So it's, it's all about perseverance. If you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is all about perseverance and get plenty of rest, build a good support system, eat healthy and exercise. Those are the big things. We're going to attribute that quote to you. That's going to, we're going <laughs> to coin the phrase. So Jamie, if our listeners wanted to reach out to you to find out, find out more about your business or this new venture that you're starting, how would they do so? Yeah. So you can really just fo follow me on LinkedIn, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I have that up all day, every day. And I am not super selective in how, who I engage with on there, but yet I am. So I, I, I do look at everybody who sends me a request, look at every message and then kind of go through and 
triage those, so to speak, or say, hey, yeah, this is a great thing. I am definitely drawn towards helping younger people. I think I answer like college kids probably more frequently than I answer anybody else because I do feel like that's the next generation and and we should help them tremendously and, and teach them maybe maybe not how they should do it, but definitely how not to do it or share experiences and say, learn from that. That's That's been one thing since I was, I guess, in my mid thirties has been not necessarily telling people or teaching people how they should do things, but helping them understand what happens if I go down this path versus this path and, and really think it through and, and things like that. That's to me because teaching people how to problem solve and, and make sound decisions is the most important tool that you can ever give anyone. Well, you're on the perfect show for that. Thanks. But thank you, Jamie, for being on this episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.